everybody, welcome back to the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Keitel. I'll be hanging out with you today, and I'm going to warn you right off the bat. All things are conspiring against us. we got a really tough topic today. They are paving the street outside my house. The dog's feeling a little crazy, so we're going to hope that this goes all right. We continue on in our series of about energy today with the topic of free energy. Now, I'm going to warn you right off the bat. This topic's a little bit hairy, so we're going to do our best to get through it. Always start out with our objectives, so here's what I need you to know by the end of this video. First thing, use the concept of free energy to predict the spontaneity of a reaction. Already getting into the big words. Second one, relate delta G to endergonic reactions, exergonic reactions, and equilibrium. More $10 words. So let's go ahead and jump in. No fear. I think we can get through this together. First thing that you need to know about is free energy change. There's this guy named Gibbs. And he did some calculations around reactions and whether a reaction will happen spontaneously, meaning just kind of on its own without any help, or whether it needs some energy to get going. Out of his research, he put together this equation that is right here. We've got delta G equals delta H T delta S. Now, first thing to remember or to understand is that delta, Greek letter, equals change. All right, so in science, anytime you see that Greek letter delta, that means that it is change in something. So for Gibbs's equation here, delta G is the change of energy in a system, and specifically free energy. That is energy that is available to do work. You don't really need to understand all of the pieces of the equation. Just know this. We are measuring the energy needed to get a reaction going. So only reactions with a negative delta G are spontaneous. So if the overall reaction has no net input of energy, so negative delta G, you don't have to put anything in to get it going, it's going to be known as a spontaneous reaction, a reaction that just kind of happens on its own without the body or the organism having to spend any energy to make that happen. So next topic is stability and equilibrium. Here we go. Back to delta G. For any reaction, delta G, which is change in free energy, is the start, the final energy, minus the beginning energy. Spontaneous reactions move towards stability. So a reaction that's going to happen without any input of energy is going to be a reaction that moves the molecules that are reacting from a place where they are unstable to a place where they are stable. Down on the bottom there, you see three quick little ideas. You've got a diver, you've got the process of diffusion, and you've got a molecule. I'm going to draw you some crude little pictures to kind of give you some illustration. Let's draw above my head here. So we've got a diver. He's up on a platform. Here's our happy little diver. This diver is above the water. Let's say he's 30 feet up. He is unstable. He's in, in an unstable state because at any moment he could fall down into that water. Now that is a process that would happen spontaneously. He could just tip over and fall. It wouldn't require any extra energy to get him to fall into that water. Think about diffusion. If somebody at the back of your classroom sprays a bunch of perfume, that perfume will spread throughout the classroom because all of these molecules when they're together they are more unstable. They don't like being near one another. They naturally want to spread out. So they are moving from a state that is more unstable to a state that is less stable. Molecules. If you've got a big old molecule that's got several atoms all bound together, a lot of the times that big molecule would be happier. It would be more stable if it were a couple of smaller molecules. So big molecule bound together is in an unstable state, but if you take this thing and you break them into two smaller molecules. Each of these smaller molecules is more stable than the larger molecule. So all of these little drawings are trying to illustrate the fact that if a reaction takes something from a less stable state to a more stable state, there's going to be no input of energy to make that happen. It's just going to happen normally. And that reaction will have a negative delta G. It's going to be a spontaneous reaction. There are two types of reactions that you need to know about. And if you notice, I took a big old breath because these are things you need to know about. Exergonic reactions and endergonic reactions. They are way easier to keep straight than Gibbs free energy. 
Exergonic reactions release energy, all right? So the reactions I just talked about, those things that happen spontaneously because you are going from less stable to more stable, those are exergonic reactions. They give off energy as they're proceeding. So if you look over there on the right-hand side, you'll see that we've got a big old molecule, our reactant. He progresses through this reaction right here and ends up with three smaller molecules. In the process of going from big molecule to smaller molecules, his energy changes from here to there. And that change represents energy that is given off into the system. Now this hill right here is something we'll talk about in a later video. It's called activation energy. But for now, just remember exergonic reaction, big molecule, less stable, smaller molecules, more stable. The difference in energy between the unstable molecule and the stable molecules is the energy that will be released. That is your Gibbs free energy. Since we are happening spontaneously, this is a negative delta G. The sister of the extragonic reaction is the endergonic reaction. This is the exact opposite. Endergonic reactions absorb energy. In this case, the body is actually spending energy to make something happen. So you're going from three smaller molecules to one larger molecule. Your body is having to put energy in to make this happen. So these little atoms right here, they need a little help to form the bonds with one another. Every time one of those bonds is formed, some energy is stored, which means energy is used up, and ultimately this bigger molecule is less stable. So it took energy to get from here to there. And that difference in energy is the change in free energy. Since this reaction took energy, there's going to be a positive delta G. Positive just means that you have added energy to the system in order to make things happen. Finally, we have got equilibrium. Now, generally you think in life, equilibrium is good. It's balanced. It's happy. Unfortunately, in your body, if a reaction hits equilibrium, you die. We've got three pictures here that kind of help to illustrate why. And this first one does the best job of illustrating why equilibrium in metabolism is bad. They show you a little system here where you've got a hydroelectric plant. Water in this tower is flowing down through the turbine, which is causing our light bulb to produce light, and is flowing into the lower tank. Now, we got a problem. This is a closed system. Nothing is flowing in, nothing is flowing out. So eventually, the level of water in this first tank is going to even out with the level of water in the second tank. When that happens, water is no longer flowing through our turbine, we are no longer making electricity, this system is dead. Let's contrast that with an open system that has got an input of water and it also has an exit for the water. So we are continually putting water in, that water is flowing through the turbine, doing meaningful work, and since there is a spigot that allows water to exit, we don't get that equilibrium where things fill up and the turbine no longer turns. So in our body, back in the last video, we talked about metabolic pathways where you are going from one product to the next, to the next, to the next, and enzymes are helping you along the way. As long as there is something to take away that end product, that reaction will keep happening, the body will not hit equilibrium, and the reaction will keep running. But if for some reason the process goes away that takes away whatever the end product is, then you get a buildup of the products that are being produced and your reaction stops running. So when we are talking about reactions in the body, generally it's good not to have equilibrium because you have to keep taking away that end product so that the reaction will keep running. I know that was a lot of stuff. I feel like it went pretty well. Hopefully you feel like it went well. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.